Today, we will discuss about the cardiac veins. The majority of the cardiac veins drain directly or indirectly into the coronary sinus. That's why the coronary sinus is the first structure to be indicated on this drawing. The coronary sinus runs transversely in the left atrioventricular groove on the posterior side of the heart and feeds into the right atrium. The opening of the coronary sinus into the right atrium is located just medial to the opening of the inferior vena cava. As we can observe, we have already indicated the coronary sinus. And like the coronary sinus, the structures located posteriorly, I will indicate them using dots. First vein to be indicated that drains into the coronary sinus is the great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein begins with the anterior interventricular vein. This vein, of course, is located in the anterior interventricular sulcus. Near the beginning of the left coronary sulcus, it becomes continuous with the actual great cardiac vein. The great cardiac vein follows the left coronary sulcus, also on its posterior side, and will drain into the left part of the coronary sinus, becoming actually continuous with it. A vein that drains directly into the great cardiac vein is the left marginal vein. The posterior vein of the left ventricle runs upward on the posterior surface of the ventricle and opens typically into the coronary sinus. The position of the opening varies, being sometimes in the first part of the coronary sinus and sometimes into the great cardiac vein. The oblique vein of the left atrium, or the vein of Marshall, represents a remnant of the left superior vena cava and is typically very small. It descends from the fold or ligament of the left vena cava. This ligament is also called the vestigial fold of Marshall. It descends on the posterior surface of the left atrium to join the coronary sinus near the beginning of the coronary sinus. In cases of persistent left superior vena cava, this vein is of course preeminent. The ligament of Marshall connects the oblique vein of the left atrium with the highest left intercostal vein. The middle cardiac vein is running upward in the posterior interventricular groove in company with the posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. This vein empties into the coronary sinus close to its termination. Sometimes this vein can be larger than the great cardiac vein. The small cardiac vein, although very variable, typically begins anteriorly close to the apex and runs to the right a little above the right margin of the heart. The portion of the small cardiac vein that is located above the right margin of the heart is called the right marginal vein. The small cardiac vein, after meets the right coronary sulcus, it turns around the right border of the heart with the right coronary artery and enters the terminal portion of the coronary sinus. The small cardiac vein receives tributaries from the right ventricle and right atrium. The anterior cardiac veins are several small vessels from the front of the right ventricle. They cross the coronary sulcus to empty directly into the right atrium. Keep in mind that we have also the least cardiac veins or the Tabesian veins. Those Veins are small vessels arising within the musculature of the heart and draining directly into the cavities of the heart. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this drawing. See you next time. Bye.